Although it manifests in the kidneys, most scientific studies have found that the cause of this serious kidney disease begins in the gastrointestinal tract. As the disease progresses, up to 50% of patients end up at risk of developing end-stage kidney disease and possible dialysis within 10 to 20 years. Now, currently, there are no approved treatment options. Let's go behind the mystery of IgA nephropathy. I live in Westbury, New York. I love to play golf, love all sports. I met my wife 22 years ago. We've been married to be 20 years in February. Back in 2005, I went for a routine physical. After the physical, I received a call from my doctor saying that something was off in my urine and needed to be retested. She called me and said, I believe you have something wrong with your kidneys. I followed up with a nephrologist and he told me I had IgA nephropathy basically didn't say anything else. It wasn't, this is a rare disease, you have something to worry about, you should monitor anything else. It was, I'll see you in six months. Later that year, I decided to go for some more life insurance. The results came back that I was denied for the life insurance due to IgA nephropathy. And since the doctor told me it was nothing to really worry about, this was very shocking to me, seeing this outcome. The Balancing Act met with nephrologist Jonathan Barrett of the University of Leicester in the UK to learn more. IgA nephropathy is a disease of the fine filters of the kidneys, and these filters are called glomeruli. And in this condition, they get deposited with this protein called IgA. When this IgA protein deposits in the kidneys, it leads to inflammation, which then leads to scarring and then leads to loss of kidney function. And in the most severe cases, this loss of kidney function means patients need to have dialysis or a kidney transplant. So the challenging thing about IgA nephropathy is most patients don't actually know they have the disease. But most patients are diagnosed by chance and actually the way that we identify they have kidney disease is through doing tests of the urine or tests of the blood or potentially picking someone up who has high blood pressure. There are the rare cases where patients may present with obvious blood in their urine when they pick up a cough or a cold and will trigger a referral to a kidney specialist. Most of the patients I diagnose with IgA nephropathy, it comes as a massive shock to them that they actually have a significant kidney disease. The patient is then tasking me with what can I do about that? What treatments are available to prevent my kidneys from failing? And my honest answer is we have no effective treatment and so it is a, a great deal for those patients to deal with uh, when we give them the diagnosis. Having a rare disease, I really did not know what to look for. Looking back now, you see what the signs really were. I was probably more tired than I should have been. I did see some foam in the urine. I was stable for a few years, after which the protein in my urine started to increase. The doctor at that time said that there was no treatment, there was no cure for IgA nephropathy, we just have to manage the symptoms. The doctor suggested a high dosage of prednisone as a way to try and manage progression of this disease. I had many of the side effects of prednisone, the weight gain, the irritability, the insomnia played a major factor in my life as far as not having the energy to go out on weekends or evenings uh, with my wife or friends. Playing golf came to a screeching halt. So this management of the disease had many side effects that were worse than could have been imagined before. A patient's care plan can include a healthy lifestyle and medication management. Immunosuppressives aim to reduce inflammatory response and turn off the production of the abnormal IgA. Non-immunosuppressives are used to lower blood pressure and reduce the amount of protein in the urine. None of these options, however, are enough to protect the kidney from future decline. Patients tell us that actually the side effects of taking these drugs can often be worse than the possibility of developing kidney failure. And this means we have a significant unmet need in th the treatments we can offer our patients. They want new therapies that are safe, that they can tolerate taking, and that we can show will protect their kidneys 
against future deterioration and stop them needing dialysis or a kidney transplant. So we know in IgA nephropathy that actually the kidneys are an innocent bystander in this disease because they are having to deal with this abnormal IgA that has been delivered to them every minute of every hour of every day. And so concentrating a therapy directly on the kidney may well control the inflammation within the kidney, but it doesn't solve the problem. And therefore, if we hope to cure this disease, we need to target therapies at the very beginning of this disease, which is the production of this abnormal IgA. IgA is an antibody whose main function is to line the surfaces of the mucosal membrane, where the body surfaces are exposed and come into contact with viruses and bacteria. IgA is secreted to stop bacteria from entering the body. As the largest mucosal surface, the gut is the major site of IgA production. Now, in IgA nephropathy, what we found is that the IgA that gets stuck in the fine filters originates from payers patches, which are very organized parts of the immune system that are situated within the small intestine, called the ileum. And to solve the problem, we need to target the production of the abnormal IgA. Because we know that if we plumb a brand new kidney into a patient with IgA nephropathy with a kidney transplant, that kidney is just as much at risk of IgA nephropathy as the original kidneys were. The hardest part is waiting for the lab results and then the panic of opening to see how or what your kidney function was going to be this time, knowing that there's no cure, no treatment for it, even if the blood work is bad, what's the next steps? What happens if I get to a point where I need dialysis and can't work? Those are all the things that keep you up at night, thinking what's gonna be the future for me as everybody in this disease advances at a different level. Unfortunately, despite doing everything he could, John's blood work showed the prednisone was no longer working. He was referred to an IgA specialist who started him on a different management plan. And while it worked short term, it did not last. The IgA specialist gave me two options. One was to go back on prednisone or to join a clinical trial for patients with IgA. In looking at the clinical trials that were available, I decided to go with the clinical trial that was best for me. My results from my last blood work while on the clinical trial, my GFR has been stable, my protein has decreased dramatically. So this clinical trial shows good progress for me um, and helped relieve a lot of stress in my life. It is a truly global effort to find a cure for this disease. It is a real testament to the patients who are desperately keen to help with this research. And my discussion with the patients is always to give them the opportunity to be involved in research of new therapies that could ultimately deliver us treatments for this disease. I was asked to sit on the board of directors for the IGA Foundation of America. Well, I got asked to sit on a panel to speak to the FDA regarding research, the trials that were going on in order to help bring those to market sooner. In leaving that panel that day, very emotional, listening to some of the people who have terrible lives, and you could not imagine how lucky you felt leaving there. It makes you wonder really what tomorrow brings if there is no true treatment or other way to manage this disease. For more information on IgA nephropathy, visit IgaN.org or you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back.